children involved and grandkids. And uh, we'll all make it, but uh, it's, it'll be some rough times. It's going to be some rough times, but uh, we'll, we'll get through it and hopefully learn a lesson and uh, pay it forward to help someone else with what we learn. Um, that's what I try to do every time I go through something. I, I try not to stay there too long. And uh, I try to learn my lesson and uh, and move forward. And, and y'all moving forward don't mean you still don't have bad days or miss those people. Because you do. Uh, but it gets easier to talk about and it gets easier to deal with uh, in time. Uh, it doesn't mean you, you miss them any less. Or, or it don't to me. Now everybody's got their own own opinion. And I, I, as I've said before, I'm not here to debate anybody's emotional feelings or, or opinions or, or anything. Um, this is just my opinion, my thoughts, uh, which uh, ain't worth uh, enough money to buy you a cup of coffee these days. But uh, even with the price of inflation, it still ain't enough, y'all. But uh, it's it's some some pretty uh, scenery out this way, and the, the sky looked real pretty. And, I wasn't going to make a video, and then I was like, oh, I might as well. <clears throat> I might as well while I'm out here. Looking around, y'all. Just looking around. <clears throat> friendly. See what I tell y'all about folks in the country? It's a Morrell Creek. My creek runs into that creek, y'all. There's a lot of history on these creeks around here. If anybody's interested in, uh, in history, <clears throat> Creek, and if you need to know how to spell that, I can't tell you. I always have to look it up. Go back to my videos, and I have it written. I have it written on some of my videos, y'all. Brinley's in her seat, snuggled down. I think she knows I'm restless, so she's been restless today, too. I, I did as much as I could. I can't stay focused on anything today, y'all. It's just, uh, it's just anxiety. Just anxiety. <clears throat> but I'll, I'll be all right. And my friends will be all right. We'll we'll be all right together. We'll get together and spend time and do things together. Love on each other and cry and talk, reminisce, and tell funny stories. And we'll make it. It's just the anxiety of getting this uh, next couple of days behind us. It's what it is, but I thank y'all for letting me vent to you and y'all riding along while I talk. That's what friends do, right? You have a good day you share, you have a bad day you share. That's how it's supposed to be. How y'all like these little bridges? I 
I wish they'd have left the bridge by my house alone. There wasn't nothing wrong with that bridge. They put that new one in there. Boy, it's been a mess. It's caused my land to erode. The water don't run through them tanks right. Uh, it was one big open tunnel. Now they put a divider in the middle and all the brush trees that fall upstream catch crossways. It stays dammed up half the time. And that causes it to flood out onto the land, you know. And uh, you can't get the county to come out there and clean it, to fix it, to clean the ditches. To do nothing, all you hear is it ain't in the budget. It ain't in the budget. And even in the drought, what uh, <clears throat> cracked me up was you could call and ask them to do something. They always tell you it's too wet. It's too wet. There's so much spring water out there. Y'all, even in the drought, you couldn't get them to come out there. In the summer, when we didn't have no rain, they didn't mow them ditches all summer. They didn't clean them out. That's why last time it flooded, I had such a mess um, in my yard because all the stuff that they should have cleaned out of the ditch came down and hit my culvert. And of course, it's flooding rain. I couldn't get out there, you know, and, and move it. And it took me four hours the next day. Four and a half. Four and a half hours to clean the end of my culvert. Um, well, I mean, I'm not as strong as I used to be, and it hurts my shoulders. And uh, But that was almost steady without stopping. Moving sticks and limbs that they could have come with their truck and picked it up with their little scooper. It has that arm and it it grabs. <clears throat> and they could have picked that up. And uh, then I called them and they wouldn't come clean it out. And it was flooding. Y'all, it would have washed a rut, a ditch down the middle of my yard <clears throat> and washed part of my asphalt away. Um, if I didn't move that. It was already from that one night. Uh, you could see on my asphalt where it was already cutting a hole through it where so much water, like it took the whole top layer of my asphalt off and was getting down into the gravel from just one night. Now y'all know if I left that, that would have made a rut through my driveway and across my yard. They wouldn't come clean it. I don't understand. Um, I mean, I know everybody's, you know, low of money and short-handed and, you know, all kind of stuff. But you would think at least once a year that they could come down that road no longer than my road is and clean the ditches. They used to. But I'll tell you this, the man that used to do it don't work in our area anymore. He works in another county. He still works for the county, but he don't work in our county. And uh, <clears throat> that's why when we lost him, uh, we lost out, y'all. Because he kept those ditches clean. He would come in the drop of a hat and do anything when he was over there. And uh, people just don't, just don't have morals and respect and such anymore. <clears throat> Don't know, just a sign of the times. Somebody's burning over there. Y'all can't see the smoke, but I can. Somebody must be cleaning up a field or something. Isn't it pretty down through here? I know I'm rambling, but I am enjoying what I'm seeing. And it's warm in here. It's cold outside, and it's warm in here, and it feels good. My hands, my hands were cold, and I got my uh, steering wheel warmer on. <clears throat> I know y'all hear that tapping. I'm trying to get 
my screen. I'm trying to get something on my screen to come up. And uh, everything but what I want is coming up, y'all. Was trying to adjust the temperature on my steering wheel. How about this bridge? I don't think y'all can. I don't know. Y'all might can see that water. Nobody behind me. Y'all see that? She's blowing pretty good today. I don't think y'all can see on that side. I don't think y'all can see on that side. And I would take it out of that holder, but every time I do, I can't get it back in there. Y'all, there's stories of a treasure, buried treasures and such on these creeks. I've read a lot of that stuff online. There was one uh, man, I can't think of his first name, Goins. Goins was his last name. G-O-I-N-S. Goins, I believe is how he spelled it. And, um, Y'all, there's a car pulling over on the shoulder, and I guess they're turning, but they ain't got no signal on. He's an old man. So I'm waiting. He turned. Now ain't that something? He turned, but he didn't have no signal, but I wasn't fixing to pull out there till I knew what he was doing. going on. I think I got it fixed. Anyway, um, Goins. Look up Goins. I can't think of his first name. But he was a black slave in the 1800s. A free black slave and he bought a bunch of land over where I live on the west side of Nacogdoches. And when he went to uh, war, he was a blacksmith, and he had a lot of, I guess back then they'd say riches, and uh, he buried them on my creek, and if you read the history, uh, it'll tell you the name of my creek, that his home <coughs> was on the forks of my creek, which is Alita Creek, at Morale Creek, that's Morale Creek we just crossed, uh, that his home was at the forks of that, and that he buried his riches to get when he come back from the war. But there's nothing about if anybody ever got his gold or whatever it was that he uh, buried. And then there's a lot of uh, stories about the pirates coming up the rivers from the Gulf and burying treasures on the rivers. <clears throat> and there's a few stories on there about people that I guess did attempt to try to find some of this stuff. But uh, I know when my dad was young, uh, they found all kinds of stuff on the creek over there where I'm at. All kind of arrowheads and dishes and bowling balls and bowling balls. I found the bowling ball. Uh, I was thinking of what all had been found. <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh. A bowling ball. Yeah, Indian had a bowling ball, y'all. Pottery. Uh, oh, a, a boat 
washed up one time. We, we found a boat. Uh, but I was talking about what my dad found. Uh, arrowheads and uh, cannonballs. Cannonballs. And they didn't keep none of that stuff, him and his brothers. You know, they didn't ever think about it being worth anything. But my bridge by my house was the main bridge the main bridge between San Antonio and uh, Nacogdoches or any of the main towns in Louisiana. Uh, you know, so that's that creek uh, and there was one other creek before you got to downtown. And you know, that's where they stopped to water their horses and camp out and stuff, you know. So I bet there was a lot of stuff there. Uh, the SFA University History Department, I've talked to two of the professors there, and they've studied my land out there and the creek and everything and all the history that's on it. And it's it's interesting, y'all, to, to look all that stuff up and read it. But, uh, you know, back in the war, that's where they camped, uh, the soldiers and stuff. And, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting that you, you know, you live on all that history, but, you know, that, that don't mean anything to anybody anymore. But if I can find that story about Mr. Goins or some of those uh, stories, I, I may put those in the description of this video uh, where y'all can look those up. But it's, it's pretty interesting stuff. They're making our new uh, overpass here, y'all, for uh, our uh, corridor 61 or whatever it's going to be called, a new interstate coming through here. They're, they're doing the new overpass there. The next overpass, they've all, almost got completed. Uh, <clears throat> be glad when they get all that done and it's took years they've been talking about that for I bet you close to 30 years that I know of and it may have been discussed before that but they've been doing the construction on that other overpass man I don't know five years or something and now they've just got around to this one <coughs> excuse me y'all I get to talking and my throat gets dry. Like I said, I ain't doing anything. Just trying to drive off anxiety. I felt it coming on at the house. I'm like, okay, time to time to go. It was too cold to walk. I usually just walk when I feel that coming on, but oh, uh, I decided I better take a ride. a little it's a little cool today I'll take Brinley for a little walk before I go to that visitation later she ain't gonna like me being gone she never likes me being gone but she can't go bless her heart she would have to stay home wait for mama y'all she's just looking at me she knows I'm talking about her she knows I'm talking Just been out riding around, looking, looking, doing the old people thing. Isn't that funny? You ride when you're young, then you have midlife and you're too busy, and then you get old and you start doing the same thing you did when you was young. Y'all ever thought about that? Oh, goodness. Isn't life funny? You got to laugh about it, y'all. Got to laugh about it. I think about doing lives, but y'all, I can't do no live because y'all would be commenting and I wouldn't be able to answer because I have to wear my glasses to read. I don't have to wear my glasses to drive. 
and uh, that wouldn't work. So I guess I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Fresh eggs for sale, Monday, Wednesday, Friday only. Well, okay then. I'm glad to know where she sells eggs in case I ain't got none. <coughs> I need to go check and see if I got any. I got a lady wanting to come pick some up tomorrow. and I don't know. I think I have at least three people on the list after her. They didn't lay yesterday. I don't know why I got one egg. I'd been getting seven or eight, ten eggs last few days. I got one egg yesterday. So I don't know if something got them. Y'all, because a squirrel, a squirrel will go in there and get them. Y'all know that? They will. They surely will. They'll get them and eat them. Usually, if one of the chickens break one, they won't eat all the shell. So, you know, sometimes they get in there, you know, scratching around, trying to make their nest to get comfortable. And, uh, you know, they'll break one. But you can usually tell when it's... Uh, when it's a chicken. And the possums and the raccoons usually don't come out in the day. <clears throat> right before uh, dark. Sometimes like an hour before dark I've seen the possums and the raccoons out. And if they're hungry they're out looking And one night I went out and there was three, three little possums in the nest. Of course, there wasn't no eggs. And I had fake eggs in there, but I've never had a snake, a raccoon, a possum, nothing eat a fake egg. I have bought every kind that you can imagine. Glass, plastic, uh, ceramic, not yeah, ceramic. Uh, I don't know. There's another one, a different texture. I bought every one that, that you can get. I've even put like the plastic, uh, you know, Easter eggs in there. And uh, the raccoons and stuff, a bust the end. Uh, they'll bust the end out of them. But they won't swallow them. But they'll bust them, crack them open on the end, I guess, trying to get the, the middle out, you know, to get the yolk and stuff out. Now, I've seen that happen a lot of times. Or they'll take them out of the nest, and you'll find them laying somewhere in the chicken yard or around the edge somewhere. They'll pick them up and tote them. Um, one time, I had some come up missing and couldn't find them y'all and uh, found them all under my front porch now I don't know what animal took them up under there but there were several of them together and every one of them the end of them had been uh, busted open and now my porch from that nest was a good ways good long ways or possums or anything messing around my chicken pen at this house where I just moved here since uh, this is January since July I haven't seen any um, my neighbor has a dog pen that's really close on the other side of the fence and I'm wondering if that's why because that dog is over there because usually you'll see them somewhere you'll see them out somewhere y'all I'm 
thinking I told my friend I was going to ride by. I don't remember the address. I know the, the street, so I'm going to ride down the street. She don't live here anymore. And I told her a week or so ago I'd ride down that street and show her. We went to elementary school together and then she moved. And uh, every time I come to town or out, I forget. So, back over there somewhere, I thought about it. So, I'm trying to make my way through over here to the street where she lives on or lived on so she can see. And then I'm on to make my way back to the house and take care of the chickens and take Brindley for a walk and whatever I gotta do, I gotta get it done early today, because by the time the visitation's over, y'all, that'll be, you know, eight o'clock or so. And Flora Street. This is where we need to go. Right here. Flora Street. Okay, Miss Sheila. I don't remember what address and it's in my phone, but I'm videoing with my phone, so I can't look up the house. <clears throat> so I don't know which one it was, because I don't remember what number you told me. But I'll go down one way and come back up. And uh, maybe you'll see it, because I don't remember. And my cousin lived down here too at the same time, but I don't remember. Gosh, I was young, y'all. I don't remember that. I mean, I remember us all playing together and being together and being at school together and, you know, that sort of thing. But maybe they won't. It says no trespassing, but. Maybe they'll let me turn around and not shoot shoot at me. 305. I know she maybe she said three something or girl, I don't know what you told me. There's 409. 415. I don't know. Maybe she'll see it. Y'all, them people right back there, them some people, the girl hit my truck that night downtown. I was at a concert at Bonita Creek, and their daughter was driving with uh, out her glasses. And uh, without her driver's license. <laughs> and she hit my back end of my car and rammed it up into the sidewalk tore the front end of my truck up, tore the bumper off, tore the whole side of the back of my truck off. Y'all, it was a mess. And then people wouldn't answer their phone. And uh, I went down and got the police report. I, I rented me a car. I was trying to get them to answer the phone so my insurance would pay you know, for my rental car, about three days, they wouldn't answer the phone. The insurance kept saying they won't answer the phone. I said, well, give me the address. They said, well, we can't give you the address, but you can go get a copy of the police report. The address will be on it. <laughs> Y'all, I went and got the copy of it, and I went and rented a car. It was a Camaro, girl. Ooh, it was nice. And I was mad. Let me tell y'all, I wasn't walking in the name of the Lord. I was mad. And I drove the police stations right here at the bottom of the hill. And I drove up here. And I knocked on them people's door. And that truck was sitting in that driveway. And them people was home. And I kept telling them, come to the door. That I needed to talk to them. And uh, they were Hispanic. And I said, I know you understand English. And I said, my insurance will not pay for my car. Like, I need to go to work. 
and uh, I need you to pay for you to call so my insurance will pay for my car and uh, they wouldn't come to the door but you could hear them in there and uh, I said well I'm gonna leave and I'm gonna give you you know like an hour or two hours and if you don't if you don't call I'm coming back y'all I'm gonna show you there's a house right there that's it right there then people would not call but anyway they called after I knocked on the door I guess they thought you know crazy white woman's over here not that I'm saying anything bad about Hispanic people, y'all. My, my best, my neighbors are Hispanic. They're my best friends. But um, they would not call. I, I don't know why. But their insurance had to pay for everything. And that little girl got a ticket. But uh, my car was parked in a parking lot. And uh, what happened was, they think, is she... There was a bigger truck up past mine, and then my niece's car was parked by me, and she was kind of up in the hole between the two trucks. That girl clipped that bumper of that other truck. Instead of turning her truck away, she turned her truck in, and it took my truck out, y'all. <laughs> it just took my truck out, and it was just sitting there. But now for her to knocked that truck into you know the wheels lock and it pushed my truck three quarter ton truck up on a sidewalk and I mean it just tore the whole front end up because those wheels were locked that was the biggest mess y'all I've gotten hit several times like that with my car park I don't know what it is what it is about my vehicles, but people like to run over them. But anyway, it all works out. But it was just aggravating because they wouldn't answer and nobody would go to their house. And I'm like, man, I gotta have a car. I gotta go to work, you know? my sister and different ones to give me a ride but you know you don't you don't want to keep uh keep bugging them you know and then our schedules were different and trying to share a car and it was a mess but anyway i'm just rambling i ain't talking about nothing emma junk and Brinley's just laid back. But, um, y'all, I'm gonna get off here and head back home. And I got stuff to do and gotta go to this visitation and funerals in the morning. And I don't know when I'll get back on, but, um, uh, I'll, I'll get back on when uh, all this is over with. But, uh, y'all remember this family in, in your prayers. And, uh, Y'all be blessed, and uh, don't forget to say your prayers.